I'm Diana Bagian. I'm a research scholar in the Cohere Labs Scholars Program, and I'm from New York City. I think it was really important to emphasize、um, like my skills and background and how that sets me up well for the program. Well, you know. For me, that's like strong engineering skills, and also the sorts of like questions that I'm interested in. How my background informs why that is, and also like the types of questions that I would want to study at Cohere or or elsewhere,、um, and just being kind of like authentic about that. As a research scholar, you're collecting a lot of new experiences, and that's like what the program is for.、Um, And and because like you've been dreaming to do it for a while, it can be like kind of、um, daunting and intimidating when you get the chance to. When I found that kind of dizzying, I would just take a step back and make sure that I have clearly defined list of like tasks and goals for myself. And those are, you know, you come up with them in collaboration with your mentor. And mentors are like extremely available, like extremely supportive, and they're definitely like they've been really important in in getting through the program. Just like Leaning on them and allowing them to guide you through that aspect, and then there's also your collaborators as well. So like, if there is something that's going wrong and you don't know how to fix it, going to them sooner rather than later, because you'll probably get through it faster.、Um, and then you can offer the same thing in return when they are going through something and just kind of like iterating faster that way, just like working together.、Um, And then another thing is just like reminding myself that I belong here and there's a reason why、um, I got into the program, and that would kind of like help get through、um, the the scaries that these big things pose. Yeah, I feel like day to day it's not so bad because many of us have come in with like some amount of experience, like、um, you know whether it is an engineering problem or whatever. But the experience of like writing the paper and submitting the paper—that's like new stuff for many of us, and it definitely was for me. So, you know, even though it sounds like the task of writing a paper as first author sounds really scary, but you know, my mentor Ahmed, like we came up together with like low-hanging fruit, like things to approach first, and then what do you approach after that, and like very frequent cycles of iteration, not just with him, but with the other mentors on the task, on the project rather. And that's also, I think, an important trait of this program compared to like other experiences I've had, where you're not just expected to do all of this in isolation in in a silo, and then at the end of some time period, like deliver a finished product. Actually, like the way to succeed is to like iterate faster and get like fast. Feedback and incorporate that as quickly as you can. So that was a big component in the paper writing process, and that also made it less daunting because I wasn't expected to deliver a perfect product immediately, and there was feedback throughout the way. I had very widespread experiments,、um, and I think that's like a common trait. And being able to keep track of all of these different experiments, what variables are you changing? Why are you doing it? What did you learn from that experiment?、Um, it really helps to have all of that written down because、um, I would not be able to remember if I had to keep everything in in my head. So you know, making sure that you have like a really good organizational structure is important. Another thing is like being able to people people call it like. Fail fast, so don't rely on knowing that. For example, even like I've done this before, it should work. When I do it again, that may not necessarily be true. When you're tweaking things,、uh, if you're not sure that a certain direction will pan out, finding out sooner rather than later, figuring out what you can do in terms of like quick prototyping, that sort of thing,、um, and then if you do need to like either change direction slightly or like. Debug or whatever it may be, just like things aren't going according to plan. Like being resilient to that and kind of just rolling with it, rather than allowing it to get you down because you wanted things to be perfect. In school, everything's structured as in like you get an assignment. There's not much back and forth between you and the person who gave you the assignment, and then at the end you're supposed to deliver a perfect project, a perfect product, right? Like more or less for longer term projects, it maybe can be more iterative. But I feel like I learned that the most. When I joined Cohere, and I've also had other research、um, experiences as well, where it was also just kind of like, here's this task, figure out how to do it, how to do it, and come back in a week. And it's a much more difficult environment to thrive in. So partially in the structure of the program, for example, you have meetings with your mentor at a certain cadence. You have weekly project meetings and lab meetings as well. And at each step, also you have to figure out how to. 
communicate the status of your project, um, what blockers you may have, but also your results and why they're important. And I found that really helpful, the fact that we had a regular cadence where you're so frequently like heads down in the weeds of the project, you have to take a step back and think like, why is this important? What are we, why are we doing this? If I'm spending too long on a tangent, maybe it's time to like reassess like whether or not that's the best use of time, that sort of thing. Having a structured manner in which to do it is really helpful because it teaches you like how to do it for yourself um, when that structure may not exist or maybe you need to do it faster as well. So there's partially that, but then sometimes you do just need to send people a Slack message like I've been trying for hours to get this code to work and it's not working. Someone often can unblock you in like 15 minutes. So like there's definitely a balance like you don't want to like pester people but at least the way that I am I lean too far naturally on like trying to do things on my own and it's very much encouraged to um, just like send people messages set up meetings that's communicated to you at the start but I also like remind myself of that fact throughout the program because it doesn't come the easiest to me. There is some amount of a structure imposed here. If I go to somewhere without that structure, which I've been in those environments before, I have a better idea of what I need in order to succeed so I can set that sort of thing up. Also like be less afraid to reach out to the people that I'm working with, like all of that goes together. Another thing that we've talked as well about is uh, confidence. There have been so many new experiences uh, throughout the course of this program, and it was terrifying the first ra the first um, time around. Even after, even during that experience, and immediately after, I had the realization of like, oh, this is like not so scary. It's not that bad. Able to do these things, and I know that my second time doing these things, or like wherever I go after the program, I will remember it like how to break down these complex and daunting tasks and also that I'm someone who's like capable of overcoming them. One more thing I thought of was just like instinct in terms of, you know, how to think as a researcher, what questions are important and valuable to ask, not just of your own project, but also like other people, other people's projects, like how to consume research and what types of questions to ask, what types of experiments to run. My paper was regarding tokenization with massively multilingual models and the fact that it is a small but worthwhile investment to train your tokenizer on many, many more languages than you even expect to support with your pre-trained model because it makes adaptation of that that model easier after training. And so we did like various ablations with different types of tokenizers and different methods of language adaptation. And we found that in each case, using a universal tokenizer, we call it, enables faster language adaptation. For me, like I, this was my third time applying, I believe. And so that means like I had failed twice. They actually at, at Cohere, that's something that's valued, like the fact that you're um, resilient enough to try again and also you have like sustained interest in the program um, but even if like that case doesn't apply it's still like even if you think you don't have a shot just like submitting an application anyway and uh, this program is specifically geared towards like people who haven't been able to break into the machine learning resource research or need a hand in that so it's kind of unique in the sense that the people with the most glowing resumes like may not be the most tailored or, or sorry may not be the best suited to this program and that's something that they definitely take into account um, it's like how this program can help you along your journey uh, and if you're already far along then you don't really need that as much but uh, generally advice for people applying is just also to be um, authentic as much as you can in terms of like your background and your interests and your enthusiasm for the role like that should I think naturally come through um, and uh, I feel like it's something you shouldn't worry too much about because then it feels forced but it's it's important to communicate well what your areas of interest are and and how your background support supports you and enables you to investigate those and so along with that is obviously being earnest. I don't think I had huge expectations going in but it has turned out that most of my days spent like combing carefully through code for bugs, monitoring jobs to make sure they're going well, looking over experiment results. Like I think that's a bigger bulk of my time than it has been like anywhere else and that work on its own can look a little bit monotonous um and like or like i should say not very exciting but it's in a very exciting context and so it's not something that i 
uh, grow tired of. But it is important to remember why you're doing all of this and, and why it's important. I was definitely surprised by like how open and available because so these people are like very busy and, and very accomplished and they're so kind and very available to just like chat even like if it's not directly related to like getting advice on your project or like an issue that you're facing they're very open to just like chat and, and like talk about where you're at in your career and that sort of thing and like provide mentorship genuinely and so I was very pleasantly surprised to see that and how invested they are in your success like not just in the program but personally as well that's definitely been very heartening for me